So as we're um, working our way through Proverbs now, we're coming into a section where uh, there are collections of sayings from other wise characters. So far, they've been um, by Solomon or in the tradition of Solomon. Um, and then we get this collection of uh, 30 sayings of the wise, um, and then back to some sayings of Solomon, uh, and then a guy called Eger uh, in the coming chapters. Um, so more wisdom uh, for us to reflect on. So let's uh, dive into Proverbs 22, uh, verses 23 to 35. Sorry, 22, verse 17. Pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Here they come. Apply your heart to what I teach. For it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. So that your trust may be in the Lord, I teach you today, even you. Have I not written 30 sayings for you, sayings of counsel and knowledge, teaching you to be honest and to speak the truth, so that you bring back truthful reports to those you serve. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor. And do not crush the needy in court, for the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Do not be one who shakes hands in pledge or puts up security for debts. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. Do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you're given to glutton. Do not crave his delicacies for that food is deceptive. Do not weigh yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Do not eat the food of a stingy host. Do not crave his delicacies. For he is the kind of person who's always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. Do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent words. Do not move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless. For their defender is strong and he will take up their case against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. My inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons become poor and drowsiness clothes them in rags. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who, who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. For an adulterous woman is a deep pit and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit, she lies in wait and multiplies the unfaithful young men. Who has woe, who has sorrow, who has strife, who has complaints, who has needless bruises, who has bloodshot eyes, those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You'll be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? Well, as ever, quite an array of uh, different uh, issues caught up in, in the wisdom statements here. A few themes coming through, uh, the, the danger of drunkenness, the danger of uh, greed, uh, particularly, again, the joy that a parent has um, in the wisdom of a child. Uh, but I just want to um, uh, stop on um, 
chapter 23 and verses 17 and 18, just for a few moments. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. It is very easy, isn't it, to envy the lifestyle of others around us, uh, those who are clearly not concerned about keeping God's law or, or going in his ways, people who give no time of thought, uh, time or thought to uh, what God would think, um, but making the most of what they can uh, do in uh, this life. And it's uh, very easy for us to become envious, uh, wishing uh, their seeming freedom, uh, perhaps wishing their seeming success, uh, wishing their seeming excitement and pleasure. Uh, and it's very easy for our eyes to be turned and to look at them and think, yeah, actually, although I'm not going to say it out loud, I'd love it if my life was more like that, if I experienced more of the things that they are uh, enjoying. And, and here we are with all these proverbs being thrown at us and all this wisdom to accumulate trying to think through um, how we fear the lord and how we make sure that's a priority and that just feels a little bit negative and dull and uh, dreary and hard work and oh boy if we were just free to enjoy what they're enjoying um it comes across uh, constantly in the scriptures that that's the case that people's heads are turned uh, by the experience of those around them and uh, look on, on, with favor on that Israel's problem all the way through the Old Testament, looking at the other nations and wanting to be like them. Um, we're warned of characters like Demas who, who leave the discipleship uh, team, uh, chasing uh, the things of, of this world. And uh, uh, it was Adam and Eve, wasn't it, right in the garden, looking at the fruit they've been told not to, and thinking actually what was on offer, the, the life offered by Satan, was more attractive. It, it's there all the time, and we'd be fools uh, to uh, deny that we're not uh, uh, tempted by that or. or uh, blind to the fact that it's a danger for us too but but here's here's something to fix our eyes on um yes we need to be zealous for the fear of the lord uh, yes that does need to be our priority but but why what's the what's the motivation to keep going what's the encouragement verse 18 there is surely a hope for you and your hope will not be cut off now the way that's uh juxtaposition with the previous verse it's quite clearly alluding to the fact that the, the hope of uh, sinners uh, will be cut off their pleasure, their enjoyment, they are, their freedom, so-called, will be cut off. And not necessarily in this life, not necessarily uh, an end coming to the things that they're doing and enjoying uh, in this world, uh, but certainly in the next. Death will usher them into eternity, where they'll face the consequences for their uh, sin and rebellion against God. Uh, and so actually they will lose everything. Uh, their hope will be cut off. But for the believer, uh, there surely is a future hope for us now as the problems are being written the clarity about what that hope would be and uh, the, the evidence for it was not uh, as clear as it is for us now we know jesus has risen from the dead we know there is a world to come uh, we know that uh, believers in christ will be uh, raised and uh, taken home with him to uh, that future world uh, and that hope cannot be cut off because christ has conquered we have this great certainty um, and that's a great encouragement to us to press on um, in being zealous for the fear of the Lord and making that our priority because it leads in that direction and not to a hopeless uh, future. So brothers and sisters, press on, be encouraged, keep wrestling with the wisdom of God's word, uh, keep seeking to uh, fear the Lord and uh, uh, serve him um, and uh, let's see um, uh, our futures unfold um, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, there are so many pitfalls and dangers around us, whether it is uh, drunkenness or, or gluttony or foolish financial commitments or uh, wrong relationships. Um, Father, we do pray that you would help us to uh, fix our um, priorities and our focus on fearing you above all else and on um, reminding ourselves of the hope that is to be found uh, in doing so. Father, we pray that when we are um, tempted to look at other options and be attracted by them help us to remember adam and eve in the garden the consequences of their actions help us to remember israel and uh, the ultimate end of, of their actions help us uh, to uh, recognize and learn afresh and be motivated by the fact uh, that there are consequences to sin the wages of sin is death and uh, that ends all hope um, all enjoyment uh, ultimately and father we pray then that you'd help us to fix our eyes and minds on that future hope in order to uh, help us 
uh, in our prioritizing of uh, the fear of the Lord uh, in our lives. Grant us grace in this, we pray, and help us to help one another in Jesus' name. Amen.